Michael, what should I do? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Behave yourselves! Hello, YouTubers out there. This is Jerry Sutterby at the Movies. So today we're reviewing The Zone of Interest, which came out last year and was nominated for Best Picture and Best International Film. And this is a Holocaust drama directed by uh, Jonathan Glazer, who had previously done Sexy Beast and Under the Skin and Birth. And these are two films, of course, the, the, the latter two I just mentioned I need to see. I've seen Sexy Beast many times. It's one of my, I think, one of the great films of the 2000 decade, for sure. Uh, an amazing picture. One of the best crime movies ever made, definitely. Zone of Interest is a Holocaust drama, and it deals with Rudolf Heiss. I think I'm pronouncing it right. And he is, of course, one of the worst SS commandants of the Third Reich. He had been in control of the Auschwitz camp. And, of course, this is where a number of atrocities had occurred. Uh, the gas chambers, crematorium. You've read anything about World War II or the Holocaust or seen films or read stories about the Holocaust, uh, you would know what this, uh, all this entails. So the interesting approach by this film is that what it does is it focuses on the life outside the camps, not necessarily in them. And there are films that have dealt with what had happened in the camps, mostly documentaries. Uh, a few films like Spielberg, Schindler's List, and this and that and the other, but uh, not a whole lot in terms of really the, the atrocities that went on in those camps. And Auschwitz being certainly one of the worst. And uh, the film is an exploration of Rudolf Hess, his family, and himself, living in a villa of sorts, some sort of house, and they are literally right next door to the camps. And the film shows the a normal family life, and he gets up and he goes to work every day on horseback to the Auschwitz camp, and he is supervising these Jewish prisoners that are there. And the, the fascinating thing about the film is that it shows how normal, domesticity, if you will, of this life. And they were just a regular family. Uh, Rudolf is married to uh, Hedwig, who is uh, played by Sandra Huller, who appeared in... Anatomy of a Fall and was nominated for an Oscar for that. Um, and we assume, you know, as you watch the film, that she approves of the extermination because they have a Polish uh, maid working in this house. So the film, at first it starts off with an idyllic view uh, of the family. They're right outside of a lake and they're getting ready to go swimming and whatever it, tall grass. It looks very idyllic. You wouldn't think for a second that within a few hundred yards, or if not less, there is this camp where people are being shot, killed, tortured, maimed, etc. You, you name it, it's happening. The interesting approach by Jonathan Glazer is that he chooses not to show any of it, and we mostly hear it. We hear rifle shots. We hear the uh, commandant uh, or other Nazi officers getting ready to kill somebody or uh, we hear screams and agony and all this stuff. What you normally would probably see or have heard or have seen in a documentary, the film chooses not to show it. There's one amazing shot out of many where Rudolph is standing there and it's a close-up of him and there are barely any close-ups and we'll get to that in a second. But it's an extreme close-up of him. And he's standing there, and you see the smoke, and you hear just how horrific, the screams, the agony, just the pain. You, you, you really sense it, you get a feel for it, in ways that I hadn't really seen before, uh, certainly in quite some time, with regards to this type of subject matter. So, a normal 
life of tranquility, and yet there is this situation that is hardly tranquil, just a few yards away. And the film evokes that, and then we learn that he is, uh, we, we sense that there is an unease, for sure. <laughs> but there's also une an unease between Rudolph and his wife Hedwig, because he has to leave Auschwitz and go to another camp. And she is against it, and she wants to remain there and refuses to leave with him or leave the family. And you're thinking to yourself, well, you know, but how do you deal with what you're hearing out there? You know, because she talks about, oh, the curtains that came from a, a Jewish person or the clothes or a jewel that she found in the toothpaste that belonged to a Jewish person. And you realize she is just so used to it, it doesn't matter. And the two sons that they have, I have no I real idea of what's happening. But they're used to it. And the film just, it made me quite angry. In ways that I hadn't really considered before about, uh, or had seen before. I never felt that way before about a Holocaust uh, drama. I think the only one I think is a documentary on the Holocaust called The Night Will Fall came out in 2014, uh, 10 years ago now, which shows all the combat cameramen that were recording the liberation of many of these camps and what they had seen. That was one documentary that really made me angry, but also just un understanding what had happened. This is the first uh, film that's a fictionalized treatment, although not completely, really. Uh, because it deals with a lot of facts of this atrocity, of, of, of just what was going on. There are, there are a couple of moments in the film that really I'll never forget. I'll never forget the whole film. It's only an hour and 46 minutes, which you would think that even a, a drama like this nowadays would be done for two hours or longer. But um, Hedwig's mother comes to stay with them. And when she's sleeping at night, her room is illuminated with this orange glow which is coming from the crematorium. She, after a while, she decides to leave. She can't take it anymore, and her daughter is upset that she left. I mean, why do you think she left, you know? Um, and then there's another uh, moment in the picture, or a couple of uh, scenes, that revolve around a young Polish girl, and it's shown in very stunning, solarized, black-and-white footage. I hadn't really seen... I've seen solarized stuff in movies before, but not quite like this. It's all black and white. And I wasn't sure who this little girl was at first, or what she was doing the first time that we see her. But essentially what she's doing, she's planting apples at the site for these starving uh, Jews. And at first I thought it was like a, an apparition. You know, it really looks that way. It probably was intended to, to look that way. And then we see her later on in an extended sequence where she's planting more apples and, you know, she's running around and tries to avoid being seen by the Nazis as she's riding a bicycle and this is all at night. And it was very effective. Also, there's a uh, moment late in the picture that's just opposed with uh, the Holocaust Museum. And at first, when you look at it, you're not sure what... You think at first that there's a, a, a pane of glass that's separating all these thousands of shoes that belong to the, you know, to the Jewish people. And you think at first that somehow, you know, what, what's going on here? Did they take all the, the shoes? I mean, I wasn't even sure. I didn't know for sure at, at that moment that we were in modern day. Uh, it was a modern day, not World War II anymore. But then you realize they, they are cleaning the, these floors and it's a museum. And you see all those shoes belonging to these people that had perished uh, in the Holocaust. Um, this is not a film I'll easily forget. I've always been fascinated by the Holocaust and disturbed by it, obviously. It's one of those, uh, it's a genocide. It's just the inhumanity that occurred was just beyond comprehension and always will be. And, you know, I, I think people should use this film in any Holocaust dramas and uh, documentaries, of which there are many, to really understand what was happening. 
that this really should not be repeated, that it could be, and hopefully it will not be. And that's really what I took out of it. And the film has an unrelenting sense of doom, and but there's an added and necessary depiction of tranquility in the Heiss, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, family stable, despite the very audible nightmare outside of it. So I would say it would definitely, It's not. this is not something I normally say, it would be a crime to ignore this vivid, very uniquely told and vital masterpiece from a director that now I'll be looking at his other work, um, I would consider a master of cinema. Jonathan Glazer is amazing. He's up there with uh, current directors like Paul Thomas Anderson and Scorsese and uh, a few others, you know, that really stand out. Uh, this was a unique approach and the film is shot with very few close-ups if any mostly we get uh, vistas of the outside of the villa and the inside of the rooms in uh, very spacious we, we, we sense a, a tremendous amount of space in this picture it's, it's very spatial in that sense you really get a sense of the surroundings and then and then hearing the not just the depth of field there in terms of uh, seeing how everyone is just carrying on like it's a normal another day for this family. Not a big deal. There's something going on out there, but we, you know, we're used to it. Showing that and then just opposing it with the sounds that you hear, which have a real depth of field as well. There's a depth of field to the sound. It's really quite remarkable and disturbing and angry. And I felt extremely angry after seeing this film, uh, more so than I, I can remember with regards to the depiction of this subject. And uh, this is one of the very best films ever made about the Holocaust. Absolutely, no question in my mind about it. And absolutely worth seeing. The approach to this picture is a little more standoffish uh, because uh, Glazer... The director doesn't, he takes a backseat to character development or any colorful personalities. He's more looking in as an observer, but from a distance. We don't really learn much about Hayes's uh, family roots, uh, their ambitions in life, other than just a close-knit family, but yet we sense the unease from outside the margins. It's really an amazing picture. And Night Will Fall is one of those films that, uh, as a documentary, and I think it was set in the Benson camps. I, I forget. Somebody will correct me on that, I'm sure. Um, I, I forget now. Uh, but anyway, they mention in that documentary how there were German families that lived in homes not far from the camps, and they had no idea what was going on. Well, this film shows very much uh, that with regards to this Nazi commandant, they knew exactly what was going on. And it's just, it makes it even more disturbing. And unrelenting and difficult to process this but just as remarkable a picture as you will ever see I think uh, I would say this film from last year and uh, Killers of the Flower Moon in terms of serious subject matter these are the two films that you need to see for sure depicting very different but equally important subjects so uh but zone of interest not a film i'll ever forget no, no way in hell and coming from me believe me that means a lot because i don't see too many films modern films that i'll always remember <laughs> you know uh this is one film that will definitely stay with me um but it's also a subject that I find quite fascinating. I've read books about the Holocaust, but uh, and I knew about this particular commandant, but uh, to see the depiction of the family, the tranquility, just uh, it really shook me to the core, definitely. So, unshakable masterpiece. Check it out. What do the rest of you think? Have you seen Zone of Interest? Uh, what do you think of Jonathan Glazer's uh, filmography? So, have you seen it? What do you think of it? Uh, let me your thoughts, please, and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I always try to do film reviews on more often than I can. I mostly write film reviews more so than I record videos doing them, but that's how it goes. 
Uh, but anyway, let me your thoughts, and if you haven't subscribed, please do. And But if you already are a subscriber, hit that notification bell for future uploads. And I guess that's all i got to say about that. The Zone of Interest. Let me your thoughts on this film. And this is Jerry Sadovi at the Movies, signing off.